In this video, we're going to make a shader to blur sprite and shader graph. This is a simple shader that is customizable and easily animated. Let's begin! Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and this channel is all about helping you learn how to make your own games with in depth tutorials made by a professional indie game developer. So if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing. Okay, so this is what we want to make. Over here is my character looking normal. Now using a very nice simple script, I can press a button and there you go, there it is, the sprite is nicely animated and becomes blurred. So press it again and there you go, it goes back to normal. Here I can use the inspector to manually change it as well. So as you can see, we have our nice slider for the blur amount and with the blur amount of zero, the sprite looks perfectly normal. And now I can increase it and as I do, there you go, the sprite becomes more and more blurred. The whole shader is extremely simple, especially if you've seen my previous outline shader. Alright, so this is our goal, let's get to it! Okay, so here I am in my starting scene. Let's begin by making our shader. So we make a new shader, go up here to 2D renderer and a sprite lead graph. Let's call this our blur and open it up. Okay, here we are in our shader graph with our simple sprite master node. Now the first thing we need is obviously a texture, so go into our properties and create a new texture 2D. Call this the main text and set the reference to underscore main text. This is the default name for the primary texture. It needs to be set exactly like this in order for the sprite renderer to apply it to the sprite. So here for default let's select the character sprite. So now we drag the texture onto our board. And now in here this node is of type texture and our master node requires a color. So we need to sample this texture. So make a sample texture to the node. And we just drag the texture and drag out the RGBA. So there it is, just like that, our character, just right click and select the preview as a quad. Okay, there it is. Okay, so far so good. Let's test this shader out on our character. So first we save the asset. Back in project files, let's create a new material. And now we go into our shader dropdown, go into shader graphs and select our blur shader. And there it is already selected with default sprite sheet. Over here I have my player character, inside there's the body with the mesh render and just drag it in there. Okay, let's test. And yep, there it is, there's the character looking normal just standing around. Okay, so far so good. Now back in our shader graph, our goal is to make a blur shader. So the way we're going to do that is very similar to how we did in the outline shader. So if you've seen that video, you'll be able to easily understand how this effect works. We have our texture and now we need to offset it by a little bit. So we make a tiling and offset node. We drag the output of this onto our UV. And now here we can modify the X value. So as you can see, it shifts the texture left or right. So let's put this on 0.01, just shift it slightly to the left. So this is how our effect is going to work. Now we can duplicate this and drag it down here. And on this one, let's shift it on minus 0.01. So this one is shifted to the left and this one to the right. Then with both of these two shifts, we can create a nice add node. Now we add this texture onto this texture. And there you go, you can already see kind of the effect. And now we take this output and just drag it into our sprite master. Okay, there it is. Let's test. And if there it is, and the character is indeed shifted to the left and to the right. However, you can obviously see that it is a bit way too bright. So let's go back to the shader. And in here, the reason why it's too bright is because we're simply adding two textures one onto another. So after we combine both textures, we need to add a divide node in order to make sure that we divide this input by how many texture samples we have. So in this case, two. Now we take this output, put it in there, now test. And yep, there's our character already looking a bit blurred with the correct colors. Awesome. Now let's make our blur amount customizable. So back in our shader graph, we have our nice graph, very simple. Okay, now let's add another property. This will be a vector one, so essentially a float. And we're going to call this the blur amount. And let's set the reference to underscore blur amount. And now let's drag it in here before our tiling and offsets, okay. So we have this vector, which is exposed, okay. However, in here we need to use this float as part of a vector two. So we need to construct that vector two, and the way we do that is with a combine node. Now here it's a bit confusing because the labels are set for colors, but it works the same way for a position vector. So the R equals the X and the G equals the Y and the B would equal the Z. So in this case, let's drag the blur amount onto the R, so the X. 
and we grab the RG output, which is going to be the XY output, and we drag it in there, and there you go. If we set the same amount, which was at 0.01, there you go, it looks exactly the same. All right, great. Now we need for this one, and this one is going to be exactly the same amount, except it's offset on the opposite direction. So we can simply take this node, add a nice negate node, and we negate this output, and we use this one as our offset. And there it is, everything looks exactly the same. So we have this one, and if I shift it, there you go, as you can see, they are shifted a bit more or a bit less. All right, great. Okay, so here's our effect so far. We have our blur amount. We combine it to construct our nice vector 2 to use on the offset. One of them is normal and one is negated. Then we have our two texture samples. We add both of them together. Then we divide them by two in order to match up the colors and we pass them all into the sprite master. Okay, let's test. Okay, here we are with our shader and as you can see, we have our blur amount and now we can modify this. We can increase it and decrease it. And there you go, as you can see, it's working correctly. All right, so we have exposed this nice property. Now let's add a nice little quality of life improvement. So right now, over here on the blur amount, we are working with a very tiny value. We are using 0.01. We have to use such a tiny amount because the values are normalized for the texture. So the entire texture from this side, it's zero, and from here, it's one. However, we can use some simpler numbers by adding a simple constant. So in here, we add a vector one node, and let's set it to 0.01. And now before we do all of our math, let's simply multiply our nice blur amount by the vector one. And then we take this output and we connect it into the R. So by doing this, we can now use some more normal values on the blur amount. For example, one, that's what we had previously. Now we can use two, three, four, and so on. And we are working with much simpler numbers. So in here, let's also switch this into a slider, put it from zero to let's say 10. So again, this is not a necessary step. It's just a nice quality of life improvement. So let's see this in game. Okay, so here we are and we have our nice blur amount slider and it's currently at zero, so the sprite looks perfectly normal. And drag it and there you go, we can see our effects start to happen. So there you go, just like that, we have our nice slider. All right, awesome. So right now you can already see how the effect works. All we need to do is add two more directions, going up and going down. So back in the shader graph, here is our shader so far. We have our two texture samples. Now all we need to do is actually duplicate this so let's duplicate both the samples as well as the tiling offset, then also duplicate the add, and let's also duplicate the construction of the vector and the negate. So hit Control D in order to duplicate and drag them all down here. Now, the only difference for this sector is that instead of applying the blur amount on the X field, which over here we're setting on the R, we're going to apply it to the Y field, which is going to be G. So let's take this value in here and we're going to apply it into our G. And everything else is pretty much the same. So over here, we can already see if we put a larger value. There it is, this one is shifted down, this one is shifted up, and there it is, the add. Okay, so now we can take this output in here, and we need to add it together with the horizontal. So a new add node, let's add this one onto this one. And there it is, now we have four directions. And now we simply do the divide after this one, Except again, in here, we are using four sample textures. So instead of dividing everything by two, we divide everything by four. And there it is, our colors are now correct. All right, so that's pretty much it. We have our blur on the X axis and the blur on the Y axis. Let's test. Okay, here's the sprite with the blur amount at zero. So it looks perfectly normal, all right? And now let's drag it up and there you go. You can already see a very nice blurring effect. So if we increase it massively, we can see how they diverge. We see one above, one down, one right, and one left. All right, awesome. So just like this, the effect already looks great. And if you have performance limits, this is probably good enough for most cases. However, let's try to push it one step further and blur on the diagonals as well. So for that, over here, I'm going to do pretty much the same thing and sample four more textures, except in this case on the diagonals. And yep, here it is. I have added four more samples down here. So on this one, we are constructing a vector on the R and on the G. 
So on the x and the y, so it's going to be 1, 1. And then when we negate it, we have minus 1, minus 1. So you can see the output. This one goes left down, this one up right. And here it is, both of them combined. And then down here, we are combining a vector with 1 on the x and minus 1 on the y. So for this one in here, we have up and to the left and this one down and to the right. And here it is, them added. Then we add both diagonals together. Then we add the diagonals on top of the horizontals. So here it is. And as you can see, the colors are all massive. So then we have to divide. And in this case, we have eight samples. So we divide everything by eight. So as you can see, very simple. It's just copying the exact same logic every single time. All right, so now let's check it out in game. So here we have our completely unblurred texture. And now if I increase the blur amount, and there you go, you can see our very nice effect. So increase it massively, and there you go, we can't see anything. There it is, just like that, very nice blur effect. Now in here, I have a very simple script that we can use to modify the blur through code. So it's extremely simple. We just have a field for our material. Then we have a float blur amount and a boolean if the blur is active. Then on update, we simply listen to a key input to test it out. And if the blur is active, we increase the blur amount. And if the blur is not active, then we decrease it. Then after modifying it, we simply clamp it. So in here, instead of being between 0 and 1, we're going to clamp it between 0 and 10f. And then finally, we simply go into the material in order to set the float of underscore polar amount. Again, remember that name is the one that we use here on the reference. So underscore polar amount, this is the field we're going to modify. So we set that one to this polar amount. There it is, extremely simple. Let's see. Okay, so here we are, and there's the sprite fully visible. Now I can press a button, and there you go, the sprite becomes blurred. Press again, and comes back to normal. So press, go, press normal. All right, so here it is, very simple to control our shader through our interactive code. So again, here is the shader graph. It's extremely simple. We just really need to sample the same texture multiple times. Every time we do, we offset it in a different direction. Then we add all of them together. And once we do, the colors are almost white since they're all being added together. So we need to divide them and then we simply pass it into our sprite lit master. So as you can see, the logic is extremely simple. And here is the effect again, and it looks quite great. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonk.com. Subscribe to the channel for more Unity tutorials, post any questions you have in the comments, and I'll see you next time.